greetings everyone just look at the watch it's Sephiroth Tedious O'Clock which means it's time for another unscripted episode and I'm really really glad to finally see you and today I prepared for you something really really sleep inducing which is nerd talk I wanted to tell you about some hobby of mine which started as a necessity for this channel and ended up being a real passion of mine and that is 3D printing but before we get to the main topic here is something for you I don't know in which part of the world you're watching this but uh, here in Ukraine it's kinda chilly already it feels more like winter than autumn so this is just hot tea be careful it's really hot I'm not kidding I'll place it like like near you here on the table. Feel free to sip. And let's get to it. So I started 3D printing as a necessity to make some props for my videos. Because if you want to order those 3D prints online, the prices are ridiculous. And uh, more so, I'll have to buy some 3D models and just hand them over to some random people that will get those models for free and I decided to try uh, 3D printing if you're talking about 3D printing we gotta understand that there are two different types of these printers two absolutely different technologies they utilize different materials and the only common thing between those two uh, kitchens is that the final product is some plasticky object that you create I have both types of 3D printers and I'll get into details later uh, although I only stuck with one of them spoiler it's not because one is better than the other but there are reasons and let's first of all talk what uh, all 3D printers have in common they all create objects from 3D model and for that you need a program called Slicer what does it do? basically it takes 3D model that is just a mesh consisting of polygons, vertices, all that stuff and the code slices it into very very thin layers I know like, like you're slicing bread into thin or like an MRI slices the screenshots of your brain or whatever part of the body you're scanning it's midnight, what are you doing? so and this slicer program transforms 3D object into actual machine code telling our printer to which temperatures hit its parts when to move its motors and all that stuff how, how to create it one of these types of printers is resin printing as you may guess it utilizes liquid epoxy resin it comes in bottles like this also I might be showing or mentioning some brands I'm not sponsored by any of those sadly so I will tell good or bad things about those to my heart's content I'm not paid for it one of these is resin and it comes from this liquid that solidifies eventually into a 3D object and another type is filament printers that use this oops, use this like tiny plastic thread that is melted and shaped into 3D prints so the only not the only another thing that uh, all 3D printing technologies have in common is safety measures measure measures because no matter what internet or manufacturers try to tell you none of the materials are completely safe some of them may stink less, be less toxic in a short run but all of those materials are not too good to inhale so it's not a good idea to keep a 3D printer on your uh, bedside stand or maybe on your desk where you're sitting all day near it uh, this may cause harm to your health so if you're maybe considering uh, getting into 3D printing think about some dedicated place for printer that you can ventilate later so now let's get into differences 
stay for too long near the printer, you'll feel your respiratory stuff being irritated. So it's not good to sit near the working printer anyway. And the main problem with this technology is that it's much less precise than resin printing. The layers are much thicker, so no matter how hard you try, the complete object will have these tiny lines visible from layers. Even even if you set your settings to very thin layers, they will still be there. So you will have to either, you know, uh, sand it down, uh, prime it with primer, or maybe just turn a blind eye on it and pretend they're not there, if it doesn't matter for you in the uh, final product. And there are also different kinds of plastics, like this one is PLA, it's something made from organic stuff, I believe this one is made from corn, oh my god, it's corn. It's not stinky, not too toxic, it melts at relatively low temperatures, and it's kinda easy to operate. Another type is PETG, it's a bit more durable, requires a bit higher temperatures, but still it's really easy to work with. And with PET G you can I can I create most of my props with PET G because it's more durable than PLA. It's still cheap and it's really really nice to work with. I like it. it the details are less likely to break when I try to unstuck them from the printed platform. There are also ones I did not work with, such as ABS. ABS, as far as I know, is considered to be the most durable plastic among those available for printing. It's so durable that it's suitable for printing some things like, I don't know, maybe something that will carry some load, maybe frames for FPV drones, maybe parts of some RC cars, all that kind of stuff. And something like, I don't know, like handles of sorts, like stands, maybe some cosplay props that actually need to carry some weight and be durable. They are made from ABS, but there is always a but. ABS stinks and it is considered toxic, so you cannot print ABS in your living room, sorry. And it requires a lot higher temperatures, so not all printers are capable to work with it. Mostly it's the printers with um, some kind of an enclosure that allows to keep the temperature inside stable. There are also some kinds of exotic uh, plastics like, I know, the ones that have this uh, rubber properties to them, so the final product is kind of bendable, I believe. I never work with, work with those. There are a lot of materials right now and every manufacturer tries to invent something of their own and it's basically almost the same but they give each one invention, uh, each one plastic a new name and say that it's a revolution but it all goes down to just your personal preferences and the price tag. So yeah, and they, call, they come in both resins and uh, these filaments, they come in all colors, all textures. I know they are filaments that are designed to recreate the feeling of wood once you print it. Never mind the clicking, it's my electric heater. Next important question that many of you asked under my videos where I use 3D printed props is where to get the models. There are only two, no, I believe there are three ways. It's either find those models for free. There are some saints of the people who share their creations for free. You can just download it and print. And uh, sometimes you can say thanks to author in a form of a few bucks, but it's not mandatory and not always possible. Another way to get free models is that some printer manufacturers may give you access to some sort of their own model database. In my case, it's Bamboo Lab. It's not sponsored, so take everything with a grain of salt. Uh, Bamboo Lab gives you access to, the, to their model database and there are lots of free stuff, especially 
because they save me a lot of time by modeling these props so you can spend from maybe a few to a few dozens of dollars for a model and just buy it and print it and it, this is it no other way around there are ways around but I don't want to talk to them about them and I don't use them because I also do some 3D modeling in my line of day work and I really hate the piracy it really makes my butt burn so yeah don't be an asshole spy models from authors and say thanks to them since I mentioned uh, the brand of printer I use I might say a few words about those I had experience with my first printer was Enter from Creality and I may be biased a bit I know many people get great results with these printers and don't have any problems but my relationships with this printer were complicated it started acting up right out of the box and it damaged itself, damaged the build plate by malfunctioning and Creality's support was really helpful by not even understanding what my issue is although I sent them like photos and the whole essay about what's going on they only kindly ask me to let them know if the problem stops so they cannot so they can send me a new build plate instead of damaged but the fact that the printer was malfunctioning went completely above them so i sold it i managed to find a way to fix it and i sold it for cheap and i didn't miss it a single day and then i switched to bamboo lab and they are really reasonable reasonably priced and they are of excellent quality for me at least because this is a solution for someone lazy like me who doesn't want to get into all the calibration and manual adjustment stuff they just work right off the box you do the minimal assembly like shown in the tiny manual book and you start printing and you forget about it maybe you lubricate some moving parts once in a while printer will kindly remind you to do so and um, I know there are many other great brands I didn't have any experience with them because I stuck with bamboo I know they're also popular uh, in the West Prusa but here in Ukraine they are not really common and although I could order one online it will be a real pain in the ass to find spare parts to it so I didn't even try if you have some experience with other brands, let me know how did it go? If you if you find a common language with Ender, how did you do it? And this is it. If you are into 3D printing and you have something to add, you're welcome in the comments. If you're not into 3D printing, I hope maybe it was a little bit of interest to you. Maybe I encouraged if you were thinking about a hobby, maybe I encourage you to actually go on and try it print something and uh, you know enjoy the process it's really entertaining and that's it thanks for having me today i wish you very 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 pleasant sweet dreams if you're going to sleep if not i wish you the greatest day ahead without any issues like that with the enter and we'll see each other real soon in the next episode of Roleplay ASMR. Until then, see ya.